Hey Stargazers, welcome back. My name is Nick, I'm a theaters manager at the Adler Planetarium and you're watching Skywatch Wednesday. Well, summer is in full swing and although the nights are short, the stars are bright and worth staying up late to see, even from light polluted skies. If you look east tonight about an hour after sunset, you'll see three bright stars in the shape of a large isosceles triangle. Highest above the horizon at this hour will be the star Vega. Below it and to the left is Deneb, and lowest to the right is Altair. These three together form the large pattern known as the Summer Triangle. The Summer Triangle is not a constellation, instead it's what's known as an asterism, a pattern in the sky that catches your eye but isn't necessarily a constellation or even contained within one constellation. That's definitely the case here, with each of these bright stars being part of a different constellation, but together forming this nice, bright, eye-catching pattern. The brightest of the three stars, Vega, is the fourth brightest star in the nighttime sky, and the third brightest visible from mid-northern latitudes. The name Vega comes from Arabic, meaning eagle or vulture. It's part of the constellation Lyra the Harp, or Lyre, and indeed it's often shown as an eagle holding a harp. Deneb is the brightest star in the constellation Cygnus the Swan. It marks the tail of the swan, and you can imagine looking up at a swan in flight, with Deneb as the tail, two wings outstretched, and a long neck leading to the head of the swan. Although Deneb is much dimmer than Vega in our sky, it also lies about 100 times farther away, about 2,600 light years distant. Deneb is almost 5,000 times brighter than Vega, but because of its distance, it appears a bit dimmer. The third star in the Summer Triangle is Altair, and it marks the eagle, Aquila. So the Summer Triangle really has a lot to do with birds, with Altair in Aquila the Eagle, Deneb, the tail of Cygnus the Swan, and Vega, the swooping vulture or eagle holding Lyra the Harp. Turning our gaze to the south, we have a chance to see two classic zodiac constellations, Scorpius and Sagittarius. These two never get very high in the sky as seen from mid-northern latitudes, but they're bright enough and recognizable enough to spot and identify even from light polluted skies like Chicago. The easiest of the stars to spot is Antares, which marks the heart of Scorpius the Scorpion. Antares is quite bright and a lovely reddish orange color, which indicates it's cooler than some of the blue or the white stars that we see elsewhere. It more than makes up for that though, as it's a red supergiant, much larger than our sun. It's so huge that if it were placed in our solar system, it would swallow up all the planets out to Mars. So tracing out the scorpion, if Antares marks the heart, you can see the claws extending to the right or the west, and then a long tail with a stinger at the end. Right next door, slightly east from Antares, is Sagittarius the Archer. The most recognizable portion of this constellation is the asterism known as the teapot. This marks a relatively small section of the full constellation, which shows a centaur archer, half human, half horse, with the teapot marking the bow and arrow. If you have a chance this summer to travel to a dark sky on a moonless night, make sure you stay up and take in the beautiful view of the summertime Milky Way. Scorpius and Sagittarius frame a beautiful part of the Milky Way galaxy in the south during the summer months. I like to imagine the beautiful band of the Milky Way as the steam coming out of the spout of the teapot in Sagittarius, rising up across the sky. From dark skies on a moonless night, it's a majestic view. Summertime in the Northern Hemisphere is the best time for viewing the Milky Way because its brightest sections are highest in the sky at this time. You can see different parts of the Milky Way in the Northern winter, but it isn't nearly as bright in the sky. The Milky Way, this band of hazy light across the sky, is our view of our galaxy from the inside. Every star we see with the naked eye is part of the Milky Way galaxy, but we see most of the stars along that band of light, the plane of the Milky Way. The center of our galaxy lies in the direction of Sagittarius, just off the spout of the teapot. This is the location of the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way that was recently imaged by the Event Horizon Telescope. The summertime Milky Way, especially the part just above Sagittarius and through the Summer Triangle, holds some incredible treasures to view with binoculars or a telescope. Areas that appear as bright smudges to the naked eye start to show up as clusters and nebulae with some magnification. So if you've got a hankering for a dark sky and some views of the Milky Way, the last week of July and the first week of August are your best bet this summer. Earlier in July though, you've got a great chance to take in the beauty of the moon. July 6th and 7th will be a first quarter phase, half lit 
and just begging to be investigated with binoculars or a small telescope. A week later on the 13th, it's the full moon, the buck moon. The full moon is a beautiful sight to see, but it also tends to wash out the stars in the dark sky. So enjoy the full moon on the 13th, and then a week or two later, head to a dark sky to enjoy the splendor of the summertime Milky Way. Well, that's what we've got for you this episode. Thanks, as always, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Adler's YouTube channel, and also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Happy stargazing. We'll see you next time.